Welcome to A Recipe Reborn, featuring your favorite foods from Final Fantasy XIV. Hello, my name is Lemon Drop, and I recreate dishes by combining real-life culinary inspiration with the in-game recipe, description, and thumbnail. If you're into XIV and food, please subscribe and click the bell for a new episode every Tuesday. Today I am making pumpkin stew. Since All Saints Wake is fully underway, there is no better way to celebrate than by making traditional food. Pumpkin soup is part of my traditions, too. My dad used to make pumpkin soup for Thanksgiving and Christmas family gatherings. This is our first holiday season without him, so naturally I've decided to carry on his tradition. Despite the name, the description says this is a soup, and since this is a furnishing purchase with pumpkin cookies, hint hint, there are no ingredients listed, which basically means I get to make this however I want. Have you ever eaten Indian food and thought to yourself, I could just drink this sauce? Well, you're in luck because this is your chance. I'm starting by softening the aromatics in a little bit of butter and then adding the spices. If you can't find curry powder at your local grocery store, there's a good chance you'll be able to find the ingredients to make your own if you don't already have them in your spice drawer. I've added a link in the description to get you started. Once everything has come together, I'm adding the liquids starting with coconut milk. This could be regular milk if you prefer. If you want to go the other way and make this completely animal free, use coconut oil and vegetable stock and you've got an easy, dairy, and gluten-free appetizer for your next dinner party or holiday meal. I'm adding chili flakes because I like a bit of heat, but this is optional. As usual, times, temperatures, and measurements are in the description below. Let this simmer for about 30 minutes before pureeing with an immersion or standing blender. I have to say that the soup is way better pureed, the smooth, even texture gives a really luxurious mouthfeel. That's pretty much it for the soup, I'm holding it at a low heat while I prepare my garnishes. I'm punching star shapes out of sweet potato and then baking them in a low oven. I've chosen to bake them instead of just cooking them in the soup because I think they will dry out a bit and hold their shape better, as well as float gently on the surface. This is a buttercup squash, not to be confused with butternut squash, which is tall and beige. This was the closest thing I could find in terms of a green pumpkin, so I'm carving it like a jack-o'-lantern. It also has very thick walls, so I can safely scrape off the skin without compromising the integrity of my pumpkin bowl. I'm scooping out the inside so I can clean and roast these seeds later for snacking and then just gouge out its eyes and mouth, I guess. Strange thing to say. Ta-da, that looks nice and spoopy. All right, time to put everything together. That looks pretty yummy. A few finishing touches. For me, this flavor is filled with memories of being surrounded by family and the festive holiday season. It's not too filling, and the delicate balance of the sweet pumpkin, spicy curry, and verdant cilantro really wake up the taste buds, which make it a great appetizer to a traditional heavy holiday meal. It's also really easy to make ahead and holds up perfectly to reheating. For the full recipe and instructions, please check out the link to my website in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week for another recipe and another episode.